Good morning, church. I want you to stand with me this morning. I'm glad you guys are here in the house today. If you're online with us this morning, we want to invite you, like we always say, get your family. Let's get focused. Let's take the opportunity we have this morning to lift our hands. Let's lift our voices. Let's declare the greatness and the faithfulness of our God in this place. Come on, lift up a shout of praise today. Yeah. 
lift a hand this morning. Let's declare this. You are here moving in our midst. I worship you. I worship you. You are here working in this place. I worship you. Worship you. Come on, God's people say it like this. You are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God. That is who you are. We sing it out in faith, yeah. Way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God. That is who you are. Come on, you are here. You are here, touching every heart. I worship you. I worship you. You are here, healing every heart. I worship you. declare like this. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop. You never stop working. You never stop. You never stop working.
going to teach you a new song this morning. What I want you to do is get these words and stand with your hand raised and declare this is a weapon of warfare for you. It's a declaration of the goodness of our God or the greatness of who he is in this generation to say, our God reigns. Our God is awesome. You're the God of covenant and faithful promises. Time and time again, you have proven you do just what you said. Though the storms may come and the winds may blow, I remain steadfast. And let my heart learn when you speak a word, it will come to pass. Rain is your faithfulness to me great is your faithfulness to me from the rising sun to the setting same i will praise your name great is your faithfulness to me
ground. Come on, church, where you at? Let's say it. My hope and firm foundation. He'll never let me down. Come on, say it again. I put my faith in Jesus. My Let me help you out this morning. Here's your chance this week. You with me? We, we, you put it on your playlist or whatever. Do what you got to do at home. You know, you'll do your thing. But this is your chance this week to stand with the body of believers and declare this word. I'm going to say it again. It's your chance this week to stand with the body of believers in this place and declare this word. And this word aligns with the fact that the gates of hell will not prevail against his church. I'm going to say it one more time if you don't believe it yet. That the gates of hell will not prevail against his church. And so we have an opportunity right now to say this. Not because you like the song. I don't really care if you like the song, honestly. And that's not like, hey, you know, I'm not trying to throw shade or anything. I love you. Bless you. In Jesus' name. Brother, sister. I have some, plenty of songs in church I don't like. It's never about that. It's about, oh God, I stand with your people and I declare what your word says. That in this generation we say, great is our God. And that we put our faith and our trust and our hope in Jesus. Not in our culture, not in our government, not in what our friends said, but in Jesus. So we declare that's our anchor right now. Come on, say it, church. I put my faith in Jesus, my anchor to the ground. Come on. My hope and firm foundation. Shout to him today, church. Amen. 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 Thank the Lord. Remain standing with me for just a little bit. Thank you for worshiping the way you're worshiping today. I was backstage waiting to just kind of come out here and worship with you, but I was worshiping back there, but you guys were just jazzing me up because of the power of the presence of God that's in this place. I want to pray over you before we uh, sing that one more time. Uh, as I prayed over you this week and specifically this morning, what I kept hearing the Lord say as I prayed over you guys is this phrase right here. I want to lift a spirit of heaviness and ignite a spirit of joy. And so, you know, guys, I don't know what you're going through. I don't know, as we walk through these crazy days that we're facing and the, you know, the, the, the days bring new challenges every day. I don't know what you're walking through, but I do know this. Joy comes in the morning. Come on, somebody. Joy comes in the morning. And so if you're walking through life right now and there's just that weight on your shoulders, I just am here to tell you that God is here to help you lift up the hands that hang down and change that countenance of pressure to a countenance of peace. And so I want to pray over you. So if you're here this morning, I'm not here to embarrass or make you feel uncomfortable, but 
as I pray, if you're here this morning and that's the category that you're living in right now, I just want you to raise your hands and just receive from Jesus. Just receive from Jesus. And so I just want to pray over you right now. Father, in Jesus' name, Father, I thank you that we can lift up the hands that hang down. And Father, I thank you that we can declare that joy comes from my Lord today. That I thank you, Lord, that in your presence is fullness of joy and the joy of the Lord is my strength. So Father, we rejoice today that we're able to gather together as the people of God and stand with one another. Father, we're working and walking through crazy times, but we know that the victory of God is ours Even our faith is appropriating the victory of Jesus in my life today. So I understand that that weight that would try to bear me down is moving out of the way, and I am soaring with the winds of eagles today. I am running and I am not getting weary. I'm walking and I'm not fainting because every step I take, I'm seizing that property by the name of the Lord. And I'm rejoicing in God's mighty power. So Father, I thank you that We have the victory today in Jesus' name. And I bless these mighty people of God. Father, I thank you, Lord, that whatever it is they're walking through, whatever it is they're facing, we have the authority to take over it right now in Jesus' name. Take authority over it right now in Jesus' name. Just speak out loud and take authority over it right now in Jesus' name. I suppress the hand of the enemy and I stop his oppression of my life and I declare that I am experiencing the ignition of the joy of Jesus today. The ignition of the joy of Jesus, and it's mine in the name of the Lord. And Father, we also, as the Rock of Gaines, will join together right now, and we declare health, healing, and recovery, and strength over my pastor, Pastor George Bradley. <laughs> Father, I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Pat, God, that you're ministering to Pastor George right now in Jesus' name. That blood transfusion that he got yesterday is bringing gl- good blood cells into his life right now. And those blood cells are being replenished. They're being replenished with fresh life. Pastor, we love you today. And we declare health, healing, recovery, and strength over you right now. In Jesus' name, give the Lord a big ovation of praise. And let's worship together. We're going to declare it again this morning. I put my faith in Jesus, my anchor to the ground. My hope and firm foundation, He'll never let me down. I put my faith in Jesus, my anchor to the ground. My hope and firm foundation. of praise. He's your mighty God today. Amen. Amen. Well, turn and say hi to someone. You can fist bump, you can hug, you can wave, whatever's good for you. We're cool with that. But before you're seated, love on somebody in whatever way works for you. Amen. 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 Yeah, Annie Bell's loving everybody in the building right now. 
and that's okay. <laughs> and that's okay. Good morning, good morning, good morning. How is everybody today? You look good. Glad you guys could be with us. Welcome to the Rock of Gainesville. Whether you're in this building or watching online, we're glad that you are with us and we can be together. We love you guys. And look, you know what, guys? Honestly, uh, as I've kind of walked through this week and just paid attention to what's taking place around us, we're walking through some really, really interesting days. And the days that we're walking through are getting just kind of crazier and crazier. We're walking through them. But again, here's the deal, guys, and don't forget this. We're walking through them together. The body of Christ, building one another up, edifying one another, strengthening one, strengthening one another. We're walking through crazy, crazy days, but we're walking through them together. Brothers and sisters in Jesus, building and edifying each other up. All right. Again, glad you're with us. Here's what we're going to do. Uh, we're going to pick up right where Pastor Jamie left off last week, and we're going to talk about citizens of heaven. Now, come on and give it up for my man, Dr. Jamie Chung, you one more time as he literally, literally knocked it out of the park, grand slam, home run, record setter. It was bad, bad, bad to the bone. And now I get the wonderful opportunity to follow him. Well, thank you, Pastor Ron. But uh, it's a tough act to follow. But we're going to do our best, and we're going to talk about citizens of heaven, part two. Now, what I want to do today, guys, is I want to give you some how-to. Pastor Jamie teed it up so perfectly last week as what it means to be a citizen of heaven. What I want to do today is equip you to understand that I've got to be able to do this. I've got to understand that I am a citizen of heaven, but I have got to enact that citizenship on the face of the earth. So I've got to ask myself this question. I'm a citizen of heaven. What does that look like here in an earthly body? and an earthly situation. So that's what we want to talk about today, helping you and I to understand that I am a citizen of heaven, but I've got to make that very, very, very practical so I can walk out my citizenship on earth. So that's what we're going to talk about. Now, in starting this off today, what I want to do is I want to kind of take you back just a little bit to last week, and I want to show you just a clip, not the entire story, of Pastor Jamie's story when he was growing up in Miami. If you were here last week, you just, like me, just enjoyed that story and really enjoyed his transparency. Come on, somebody. He was honest about what he walked through. If you were here last week, you're kind of familiar with that. If you weren't, then I want to bring you up to speed as to what he shared with us last week, and then I'm going to pick up right from where he leaves off and kind of get into this message, Citizens of Heaven part two. So let's listen to a little bit of Pastor's Jamie, Pastor Jamie's story together this morning. Go ahead, guys. But in the midst of that process, growing up there, what I began to realize, I lived in a neighborhood that was um, a new and upcoming neighborhood, and it wasn't, you know, we were modest middle class folks growing up, and, uh, but we were in between two neighborhoods, one of which was an all-black neighborhood to my south, and to my north was an all-white neighborhood. It's kind of wild. So I was literally in between these two worlds. And, um, and it was in South Florida. Um, and it was in the 1980s. So we were just coming off of some craziness in our country. And it seems sometimes like we need to look back and remember how much craziness we came out of to realize how much has been done already. Yeah. And how much good has come already, despite the sins of the past. Um, and so I was in these two neighborhoods. And, and here I am, black and these, like I've already given the disclaimer. And I didn't really totally fit in either neighborhood. Because my mom came up in Jamaica, and my mom was a lover of tennis. And so I got to see, if any of you didn't know, if, if anybody plays tennis, I would love to play some. I, that's one of my, it's tucked away a little secret sometimes. Uh, tennis is fun. But my mom played tennis, so we did tennis lessons as kids. And also, my dad's Chinese, and he doesn't play games when it comes to school. So I was not bringing home low grades. So there's a couple of things there which were guaranteed standard. You're gonna be solid in your academics and you're gonna to go to tennis lessons with mom and you're gonna play piano too because my mom is a master piano teacher, hence why my brother now has a gift to play up here and play piano. Um, but I, I was accused of, of acting white by my black counterparts at that point. Don't be playing the piano and going to tennis lessons, that's white. But I also went to the white neighborhood and had my friends have a parent or so tell them, don't have that N-word call here. We don't talk to those people. Both, both. I had no neighborhood to go to. 
back here in the middle. Then I had people from either side say, well, you, you got, you, 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 your dad's Chinese, your mom's black. I'm like, well, what are you? <laughs> I, was, I was like, a human being? <laughs> Like a, a person, I, 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 mean, I get cut, bleed red the same as you. But what began to happen early was the Lord began to show me. He said, see, you don't, you don't belong there primarily. You don't belong there primarily. You don't belong in between primarily. You belong to me primarily. Amen. Come on, give the Lord an ovation of praise. And thank you for that powerful truth. And I want you to remember the principle that Pastor Jamie finished up with because that will be a part of where we're going here real, real, real quick. So uh, what I want to do this morning is, again, talk about the how-to. And uh, it, it's really interesting, as I've listened to Pastor Jamie's story a number of times since last Sunday, I have realized uh, in kind of a weird way that his story and my story are really, really, really similar. And so he motivated me to tell you a little bit about my story and to kind of give you a little bit of my background. Because here's the interesting thing, guys. Listen to Pastor Ron. Pastor Jamie grew up in Miami, Florida. I grew up in Los Angeles, California, two opposite ends of the United States. He grew up under a spirit of prejudice and racism. I grew up under a spirit of prejudice and racism. Why is that? Because racism is not geographical, it's a demonic spirit. It doesn't matter where you are. I mean, come on, it doesn't, people want to say that racism and prejudice only happens in the South. There's just as much in the North, the East, and the West. People tell me all the time, you're, if you're from the South, you're a redneck. Well, guess what? Redneck is not geographical, it's a state of mind. <laughs> because it doesn't matter where I go in America, I can show you a house with a deer head nailed to the front porch. I can show you a mailbox with a tire around the mailbox. Listen, if you think redneck is geographical, I got two words for you, Kid Rock. <laughs> he's the biggest redneck in the world, and he's from Michigan. So it doesn't matter. It's not geographical. It's a spirit that we've got to learn how to deal with. So Pastor Jamie grows up, grows up rather in Miami. I grew up in Los Angeles. And I grew up in Los Angeles during the 60s. I grew up there during a time of probably one of the greatest civil rights upheavals in, in history of the, of the United States. During a time to where there was all kinds of rioting, all kinds of problems. And I grew up in Los Angeles during the Watts riots. And I lived 10 miles from Compton. I lived 10 miles from South Central. I grew up in an area, listen to me guys, I grew up in an area in the United States of America where I could have been considered a minority because there were more blacks and there were more Mexicans in the city I lived in than there were white people. So I, I wasn't really, I mean, let's be honest, I really wasn't, but I could have been considered a minority growing up in California. But I grew up with the same kind of stuff that he talked about last week. I didn't get called the same names. That N-word that just boils me every time I think about it. I didn't get called that, but I did get called Wonder Bread. <laughs> I got called Wonder Bread. I got beat up about twice a month just walking home from school because of my skin tone. Not because I did anything wrong. I, look, I'm a threat to you, I'm 12 years old. <laughs> Give me a break. And so I found myself dealing with a lot of the things that he was dealing with that he shared with us last week, just in a totally different part of America, but the same sentiment and the same idea. But here's where I want to go. Listen to Pastor Ron now. As Pastor Jamie finished, here's what he said. He realized, I don't belong to them. I don't belong to them. I belong to him. Don't elevate, come on somebody, appreciate, appreciate. And so when I listened to him share that, I realized what made Pastor Jamie turn out the way he did today. Jamie, Pastor Jamie turned out the way he did, not just because of good raising, and he was raised well. Pastor Ron didn't turn out the way he did today because he was raised well, and he was. 
We turned out the way we turned out because of Jesus Christ and the power of redemption. Ushers, we have a situation here. <laughs> Pastor Jamie motivated me to show some pictures. Now, I'm not near as handsome as Pastor Jamie. I've always said, when I grow up, I want to be Jamie Chung Yu. So I'm not near as handsome as he is with that beautiful skin tone and that wavy black hair. Come on, guys. I look like Herman Munster and Howdy Doody had a love child. It's just the way it is. I mean, you know, I still look like this today. But don't you love this one though? Come on, somebody. How about the one with the Easter bunny? Isn't that cool? Here, here's my early days of, of basketball. I think right there, uh, that bottom right-hand picture, I think I was 6'6 and weighed 180 pounds. I was a Q-tip dipped in iodine. Come on now. Now, I got to tell you about this picture right here. I didn't put this picture up right here to show you I played college basketball. Who cares? I put this picture up right here because this particular game was the night of the second date I ever went on with my wife. January the 6th, 1976. I played the worst game I ever played in my life. <laughs> Wasn't her fault. It was just other things. But when we grow up and we grow through situations of life, and it's not these kind of things that formulate who we are. Just like Pastor Jamie showed us those beautiful pictures of who, wa who he was and who he is today. That doesn't formulate who we are. What formulates us? I don't belong to them. I don't belong to them. I belong to him. And what changed him and what changed me and what changes you today is the redemption of Jesus Christ. The blood of Jesus Christ that makes all things new. What's the result? What's the result of Pastor Jamie's pictures and Pastor Jamie's growing up? What's the result of Pastor Ron's pictures and Pastor Ron's growing up? and him experiencing the redemption of God, and me experiencing the redemption of God. What's the result of that? Two guys. One black, one white, one from Miami, one from California, and we just don't work together. We love one another. We're not just on the same staff. Y'all missing a good place to shout right there, I'm telling you. You're missing a good place to shout. We just don't serve together in God's kingdom. We do. But this is, a, this is a brother in Christ. This is a brother in Christ. This is a sister in Jesus. This is the family of God. This is the family of God. This is the people of God. And I'm looking around this room tomorrow, this evening, and I, I'm or whatever it is this morning, and I'm rejoicing because I am seeing red, yellow, black, and white. You are precious in His sight. That's a good picture right there, baby. Where'd it go? There we go. All right. You, you know, last time I used this thing, I almost had a conniption fit. I was about to do it again. But it's working today. That was my fault. That's a good picture. And it's the same picture that you show every day as you walk with brothers and sisters in Jesus. All right. So let's talk about this. We are citizens of heaven but we've got to walk that out on the face of the earth. How do we do that? Well, Paul addressed that really, really well in the book of Romans. Because what Paul said was, for the first 11 chapters, listen to Pastor Ron, for the first 11 chapters of the book of Romans, here's what he says, you were extended grace. Because they needed to understand the society and the culture they were living in literally was a weird day. Jesus addressed it this way. Because Rome was a lot like the USA. There was an oppression against people in Rome that were called Jewish. And these people were oppressed to such a degree that here's how Jesus said it. Literally, you can be walking along if you're Jew, Jew, Jewish, 
And a Roman soldier can say this, carry my pack. And they didn't do it because it was societal correction. They did it because it was the law. If you were walking along and you were Jewish, a Roman could walk up to you and say, hey, you know what? It's cold today. Give me your coat. And so Paul comes back in the book of Romans and addresses that idea. And for, listen to me now, for 11 chapters, he says, you were extended grace. And then in chapter 12, after he says, you were extended grace, it's by grace that you are saved. You're justified, justified by faith through Jesus. You were extended grace. Now, when are you going to extend grace? When are you going to extend grace? Yeah, they're oppressing you. Yeah, they're pushing you back. Yeah, they're holding you down. But when are you going to extend grace? And so for 11 chapters, he says, grace, 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 grace is what you've been given. Now, how are you going to give grace? And he talks about that in Romans chapter 12, verses 9 through 16. And so let's read together. Here we go. Love must be sincere. Hate what is evil and cling to what is good. Be devoted to one another in love. Honor one another above yourselves. Never be lacking in zeal, but keep your spiritual fervor serving the Lord. Be joyful in hope. I love this phrase right here. Watch this. Be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, faithful in prayer. Share with the Lord's people who are in need. Practice hospitality. Bless those who persecute you, and bless and do not curse. Rejoice with those who rejoice, and mourn with those who mourn. Live in harmony. Remember, we're talking about the how-to. Live in harmony with one another. Don't be proud, but be willing to be associated with people of low position. Don't be conceited. Now remember, guys, we're talking about the how-to of taking my citizenship of heaven and enacting it on the face of the earth. And those verses right there literally show us how to do it. I could very easily say, you know what, guys, I'm done. Let's all stand together, and we would have the point. Now, I'm not going to do that. I got four more points to preach, so hold on with me. We're not quite done yet. But I could do that because there's such a beautiful picture of the how-to of how I take my citizenship of heaven and I make it active on the face of the earth. Now, why do I need to do that? I'm kind of subtitling what I want to talk about today, the connection inspection. I need to inspect how I'm connecting with you. I need to inspect every day. I need to inspect how I'm connecting with the society that I live in. So I'm sort of subtitling what I'm talking about today, the connection inspection. What's the purpose of a connection inspection. Number one, chaos is doubling. Everywhere we go, guys, chaos is literally escalating. Hey, let me ask you a question because you probably know better than I do. What day are we in in the riots in Portland? Day 78? Day 80? Day 85? I've lost count, but the, the riots in Portland are still going on. Now, when I, when I talk about the societal upheaval that's going on, Couple that with the pressure that you and I are feeling just from what's going on day in and day out. The reports we're getting on CNN with COVID and financial structures and everything else going on. Everywhere I seem to look and everywhere I turn to see, I notice that this is a chaotic society. Number two, comparison. Why do I need a connection inspection? Comparison is dividing. You know what we got, guys? We've got Black Lives Matter. We've got White Lives Matter. We've got the thin blue line. We've got all these groups, and their, their motive is probably really, really good, but what they're doing is they're segmenting and compartmentalizing society in such a way that it's not bringing unity, it's bringing division. It's not bringing people together. doesn't mean they're bad. doesn't mean they're evil. Here, Pastor Ron, say, I love you, PR. Oh, man, let's try that one more time. <laughs> there we go. We got comparison dividing. Listen, guys, no disrespect here, but if you're waiting for Donald Trump to unify America, you're living in a dream world. 
If you're waiting for Al Sharpton to unify America, you're living in a dream world. What's going to happen in the unification of America is the people of God lead the way to bring a spirit of Jesus together. Comparison is dividing, man. And I'm, and I'm not against Donald Trump, and I'm not against Al Sharpton. And I sat in a meeting with Al Sharpton one time. He was very nice to me. I don't care. But there's a division going on. Number three, confidence is dissolving. Listen to Pastor on. Florida just hit two million concealed weapons permits in the state of Florida. March of 2020, roll back seven years, concealed weapons permit have escalated 304%. Now, I'm a Second Amendment guy. I'm okay with that. But what I am wondering and what I'm think, thinking is why I went to Bass Pro Shop the other day. Hmm, thank God for Bass Pro Shop. I went to Bass Pro Shop the other day. Every bit of their hand, 50% of their handgun inventory was gone. There was not, listen to me now, there was not one cartridge of weaponry for me to be able to put into a handgun on the entire shelf. The entire shelf was empty of handgun cartridges. Why? Because we've all turned into Wyatt Earp? No. I'm nervous about going outside. I'm nervous about walking across the parking lot in the Oaks Mall when the sun goes down. I'm scared to go outside. I'm scared to go around here. I'm scared to go there. Why? Because confidence is dissolving. Number four, connection is dying. Why is connection dying, Pastor Ron? Let me listen to Pastor Ron. Here's why connection is dying. Because, as I said a moment ago, we're doing it the wrong way. We're looking for society. We're looking for culture. We're looking for uh, cultural leaders to tell us how we connect with each other. And their heart may be good. Not slamming them not beating up on them. But connection through a societal influence is not going to work. Why? Because there is a biblical structure as to how we are to connect with one another. And here's how Paul said it. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither male nor female. There is neither bond nor free, for we are all one in Jesus Christ. And that's the biblical structure of our connection. And when we come to that, now listen to me, when we come to that, because the foundation of everything I'm saying is this, Donald Trump, Al Sharpton, everybody I've named, they're not going to lead the way. The people of God are going to lead the way. Lead the way. And when we lead the way, there's going to be a connection in society that's going to literally transform the day that we're living in. All right. I promised you this. I promised you the how-to. I want to take my citizenship, which is in heaven, and I want to enact it on the face of the earth. How do I do that? I'm glad you asked. Number one, here we go. How do we reconnect, refresh simple decency? Write it down. Refresh simple decency. Look, guys, it doesn't get any easier than this. Just be decent to the people that you're around every day. Treat them the way you would want to be treated. Seems like there's something in the Bible about that. <laughs> Treat them the way you would want to be treated. Look at what Paul says. Love must be sincere. Hate what is evil. Cling to what is good. Be devoted to one another in love. Just be decent, man. Just be decent. Honor one another above yourselves. Simple decency. I don't need to make this rocket science. I don't make, need to make this difficult. I need to get up every day and I need to determine that I'm going to treat you again the way I desire to be treated. And I want to emphasize one word there for just a second, simple. Now you may have thought I wanted to emphasize the word decency. No, I want to emphasize the word simple because this gets about as easy as you can imagine if you keep it very simple. And I'm going to prove it to you. I was talking to my buddy, Coach Chris Drew, the other day, and uh, we were sitting in my office, and he started telling me a story about Jennifer Faith, and uh, she's right there. She's waving at me. Oh, she just blew me a kiss. Come on, somebody. This message is now over. <laughs> and he was telling me this story of Jennifer Faith, how he had taken her to a rehab appointment at Magnolia Park, 
And as they were sitting there in a very crowded waiting room, it was very uncomfortable. It was kind of small, and it was crowded, and it was a tense atmosphere. A lot of people in a very small area. And so as they were in this area, there was a family sitting here with a couple of kids, and there was a family sitting here, a mom sitting here with a daughter, and then there was a mom in the back of the room with a, a little boy whose head was spinning around. It's kind of interesting. And then there was this family over here, and then there was a businessman talking on his phone louder than everybody else because he was the most important person in the room. And so they're sitting in this kind of uncomfortable atmosphere, and Coach Chris takes Jennifer Faith and he pulls her up and puts her in his lap. Security. And as he's sitting there, all of a sudden, Jennifer Faith slides out and goes to the middle of the room and stands there and assesses the room. <laughs> and she goes over to this mom and dad with a couple of kids, and she hugs them. She goes over to this other family with a little girl, and she hugs the mom and the little girl. And as she's doing that, the little boy in the middle of the room whose head is spinning around, here's what he says, I wonder if she would hug me too. She walked back there and hugged him. And then she goes over and she stands in front of the businessman on his phone. And as she's standing there looking at him, he's on his phone and he says, hold on, I'll call you back in a minute. Amen. The atmosphere of the room changed. Why? Why? simple decency. Now, the one thing I didn't ask him, was that pre-COVID or not? I didn't ask that. <laughs> so I don't know. So I'm not necessarily telling you to go to a doctor's office this week and hug everybody in America. That's not necessarily what I'm saying. What I am saying is simple decency will change the atmosphere of the culture that we're living in. Love must be sincere. Number two, how do we reconnect? Refresh daily devotion. Daily devotion. Refresh devotion daily. Let's do it every day. Let's look at what the Scripture says. Here we go. Be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, faithful in prayer, and do it every day. Listen, guys, I, I want to have a, an effect on the culture that I'm living in, but I'm not going to do it just today. I'm going to do it every day of my life. I'm not going to be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, and faithful in prayer today because last night I watched It's a Wonderful Life. And I just feel I got up in a good mood. Well, guess what? I did wake up in a good mood today. But I woke up in a good mood because of the power and the presence of Jesus Christ, and He made me to understand that I can do this every day. And if the people of God are going to lead the way, they've got to do this every day and serve. Everybody say serve. serve. Say it one more time. Serve. serve. Serve the community that we're living in. Listen to Pastor Ron for just a second. If serving is beneath you, leadership is beyond you. Y'all ought to write that down. Y'all ought to write that down. I'm just telling you, y'all write it down. I'm going to get some coffee while you write it down. If serving is beyond you, leadership is beneath you. And it's just so simple, guys. It's just so simple. Here we go. Number three. Let's keep rocking and rolling. Number three. How do we reconnect? Refresh personal deference. I'm going to defer to you because in my spirit, I want to place you in a position of being more important than me. Refresh personal deference. Look at what it says right here. Share with the Lord's people who are in need. Practice hospitality. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. Rejoice with those who rejoice and mourn with those who mourn. Share with people who are in need. Just personal deference. I'm just, I, wanna, I wanted to defer to you. You know when I say this, guys, you know the illustration I get in my mind of making you more important than me? I get the illustration in my mind of a gentleman opening a door for a lady and letting her go first. You're more important than I am. Why don't we open the door of kindness and generosity and let everybody be more important than who I am? Oh, you missed a good place to shout. 
Look at Paul's deference list. And I, I know I'm, I'm probably going a little long, so I'm going to wrap this up here real quickly. Is that okay? Deference in giving, verse 13. And I'm not talking about finances. Now, if you want to give financially and you want to bless somebody financially, thank God for you. You've got a heart of giving. I appreciate that. Matter of fact, if you want to uh, defer in giving and bless financially, you just make that out to Ron Hyatt Ministries. I mean, come on. I'm not opposed to that, that's not, but that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about giving yourself, man. I'm talking about giving your life. I'm talking about giving your heart. I'm talking about giving your feelings of exalting yourself, pulling those back and making somebody else a little bit more important than you. Deference in hospitality. Now, when I say deference in hospitality, again, guys, I'm not talking about you inviting everybody in here over to your house for supper. Some of you guys have gifts of hospitality. I mean, you can whip up a batch of nothing and invite people over and you, you make them feel like they walked into the Taj Mahal. You've got that gift. That's really not what I'm talking about. When I say hospitality, deferring in hospitality, here's what I'm talking about. You know what the word hospitable means? It means to be friendly. It's all it means. Just be friendly. Defer in hospitality by being friendly. Hey, I walked into a place the other day. Actually, you know where it was? I walked into the Rock School Gym about two weeks ago, and Coach Harden was having, and his coaches, they were having a, a, a day where players were coming in and working out and trying to get better. And they were at lunch break, so I walked over to see what was going on, and as I walked into the gym to the front door, I saw Coach Harden talking to the players, and they were in the stands. And standing there in the doorway was a couple, a black couple. And I walked up to them and I said, hey, how you doing? And you know what I got back? I got back a stone wall. Now, right away, and I believe it was the enemy of my soul, spoke to me and said these words, they don't like you because you're white. They didn't know me from Adam's house cat. So why did they have to speak back to me? They didn't have to. But the enemy of my soul wanted to convince me that there was a racial divide. There wasn't. But that's what I started to think. So you know what I did? I, I, I was caught in this gulf. Do I stand here or do I leave? You know what I did? I stood there and started talking. And I'm sure they were thinking, I wish this big white man would leave me alone didn't care. I started talking. You know what I got back? A stone wall. So I just kept talking and kept talking and kept talking. And I just kept talking and kept talking. And you know what they had? They had this beautiful little girl standing at the front of mom. She was about five years old, eating a bag of Cheetos. And everybody knows how Pastor Ron loves Cheetos. So I started talking to her. They're not talking to me. I'm going to talk to her. Right away, she responded to me. Why? Anything that resembles racism is a learned response. And she ain't learned it yet. She could have cared less. She's talking back and forth to me. She's holding up her Cheetos bag. We're having this great conversation going back and forth. And finally, I looked at the dad, a big big man, about two pounds shy of a Buick. This is a big man. And I said, I would love to have one of her Cheetos, but I'm not going to ask because I don't know what you might do. You know what he did? He laughed. The ice has been broken. The ice has been broken. And we started talking back and forth. And finally, he asked me, he says, what do you do around here? I said, and I'm glad then I didn't act a fool. Come on, somebody. <laughs> he said, what do you do around here? I said, well, I'm one of the pastors. She said, that is so cool. Me and my wife were just talking about maybe coming to church here one day. Just deference in hospitality. Number, four, number three, deference in arguing. How many of you have realized anybody can argue? It takes a mature man or woman to be a peacemaker. Anybody can stir up strife. Anybody can stir up strife. It takes a mature man or woman to bring peace to a situation. 
And then the last one, deference and understanding. Please listen to me for just a second. Understand the power you bring to a situation when you say, I don't know that I understand what you're saying. Help me to understand what you're feeling. Man, the power it brings to a situation because you took the time to say, I'm sorry, I may not agree with your philosophy. I may not agree with your ideology. I may not agree with your convictions. I may not agree with that, but I do know this. I want to understand where you're coming from. may not change my opinion, but I want to understand. We're deference and understanding. And then lastly, I'm finished. How do we reconnect, refresh, deliberate agreement? Refresh, deliberate agreement. What does that mean? Look at what Paul says. Live in harmony with one another. Don't be proud, but be willing to associate with people of low position. Don't be an arrogant jerk. Oh, it doesn't say that? Oh, my bad. (laughs) That's the Hyatt translation, sorry. Don't be conceited. Look, I may find myself in a position where I have to say this. I don't understand or agree with your belief system. I don't understand or agree with your convictions, but I know this, you love Jesus and I love Jesus. We can find a way to walk together. We can find a way to walk together. Doesn't mean that I'm going to be so open-minded that my brains fall out. Doesn't mean I'm gonna do that. What it does mean is I'm going to understand that I can live in harmony with you even if there's a difference of convictions and belief system, because there's one common denominator. You love Jesus. I love Jesus. That makes us brother and sister in the kingdom of God. Come on, somebody. Recently, Tony Dungy sent out a tweet, and it was probably one of the best things that I've read since all these situations have been going on. It's probably one of the most sincere, soft-spoken, kind-hearted, but yet piercing things I've read or seen since so much of this upheaval has been taking place. And I read that and I thought, man, everybody needs to read, see, and hear that and live by it. It was a phenomenal, phenomenal statement. You want me to tell you the backstory of that statement? Because I was with someone this week who's a dear friend of mine, but also a dear friend of Tony Dungy's. And he said, Ron, let me tell you the backstory of that. Tony wrote a tweet and it was scathing. It was hot. It was anger filled. Emotions that many of us, don't throw stones at Tony, listen to Pastor Ron, that many of us have felt those same emotions. And he was just about to hit sin when all of a sudden he heard his father's voice say, is that going to help this situation? Pulled his hand back, rewrote it, and put together words of edification and words of building up. Guys, there comes a time to where you and I as believers have got to ask ourselves this question. I am a citizen of heaven. Am I representing my citizenship on the face of the earth and making these situations better? Asking myself those questions. And if I do, then what I become is a representation of God's kingdom, like my man, Dr. Jamie Chong Yu did so well of illustrating to us, and I hope I helped you a little bit. Coming to a place of understanding, I've got a simple choice. I've got a simple choice. Am I making it better or am I going to make it worse? The kingdom of God brings life and life more abundantly. Give the Lord a big ovation of praise. Come on. Thank you, Father. Come on, give God praise today. Come on, thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Everybody bow your heads for just a second. You're here this morning, you say, Pastor Ron, my citizenship is not in heaven. My citizenship is dealing with so many of the feelings and so many of the emotions that you described today because my citizenship is not in heaven. 
My citizenship is in myself, in my own actions, and my own feelings, my own wants and my own desires. My citizenship is not in heaven. I'd love to become a citizen of heaven and experience so many of those characteristics that you described today because that's what my life looks like day in, day out. My citizenship is not in heaven, but I'd love for it to be. Would you please pray for me? I'd love to accept Jesus and become a citizen of God's kingdom. I'd love to accept Jesus and become a citizen of God's kingdom. Would you please pray for me? Put your hand up right where you are. Yes. Yes. Anybody else? One more time. Anybody else? I want to become a citizen. Yes. Of God's kingdom. Thank you, thank you, thank you for raising your hands. Now, all over this building, let's pray together. Father, I come to you in Jesus' name. And I ask you, Lord, to forgive me of my sins, to make my life new, to bring me to a place of residing in God's kingdom. I want my life to change. I want my life to count. I want to become a citizen of heaven. So I do what the Bible says. I declare that Jesus Christ died and rose again so that I could have life every day of my life. And I accept it now in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Come on, give the Lord another big ovation of praise. Come on, thank God for what He's doing in lives today. Amen. Amen. Well, again, thank you guys so much for being with us today. It's been a good time being with you together and uh, being hanging out together. I know there's so many wonderful people here today, and I just say, again, thank you for being with us in this building or online. But i got to take a second and say a big hello to my main man, Scotty Adi Wilbekin, and his beautiful wife. Wave to us, Pastor Savannah and Katie's son. Love you guys. Man, what a great surprise when I saw you guys walk in. So good to see you. Bless those guys. They're wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. A wonderful part of who we are. Amen? So good to see them. Okay, a couple of things we want to share before we wrap up. Uh, we're going to receive the tithe and offering the way we've been doing it at the door. And so as you leave today, ushers, they're already finding their place at the door. They'll be at every uh, area there. Also, uh, we want to remind you that uh, coming up real, real, real soon is our, listen to me now, our 33rd anniversary service. And Pastor Savin and Katie are going to be here because Pastor Savin is our speaker. Come on and say, yeah. That is going to be a great, great day together. Also, I want to say a big congratulations to Craig and Erica Latower. They had a little boy last week. So we congratulate them. Everybody's doing good and we're happy for them. Also, uh, as we know, Pastor George is going through all kinds of things and he's going through this this uh, situation in the hospital of this transplant, doing well. I had a great talk with him on the phone. He sounded fantastic. Had a great talk with him on the phone uh, yesterday. And uh, we have a little uh, basket out at the information kiosk. And you can also bring them by the office if you didn't come prepared today. But would love for you to take some time and write a note of appreciation and write a note of love to Pastor George and encourage him. And if you have something like that today or you wanna do it before you go again, there is a basket right out there at the information kiosk. Or if you didn't come prepared because it's a surprise, totally cool, you can bring it by the church office and we'll make sure that he gets it. Come on, stand with me. Glad you guys, again, thanks for being here. Our ushers are at the door. They are ready and waiting to, to take really, really good care of you. Go be blessed and we'll see you guys real, real soon. Thank you very much. to move